Okay, so in part one, we talked about the three phases of slavery. The first phase, when people with a martial arts dedication, who tend to be martial artists, refused to accept being slaves and formed their own maroon colonies, which were also traps. They also took slaves, a ruin. And among them are some people that meant well that, uh, and, and the people that didn't. When the martial artists were all but gone as a result of house niggas betraying them, then we see the second phase where the master is still cracking the whip. The third phase goes on to when the slaves are freed by Lincoln and goes on through segregation, Jim Crow, etc., into modern day when the master no longer needs to crack the whip. They have accepted this gender neutral, passive spirit of bitch shit or Luciferian energy of bitch shit like the, the female in the house who was there before the house nigga. Before the house nigga became a passive, gender neutral pussy who was uh, well uh, uh, acclimated to Western society, there was the female who was friendly to them. Uh, this goes back to the right and the left. Ra, the right, the G is the, the seventh letter, the hidden hand of masonry, the H is the fence, the T is the plus or the feminine suffix, they all can be removed, so you get Re or Ra. Going backwards is your, okay? And the left, uh, the T is the plus, backwards you get fee is L, the fee you pray, uh, pay to be on the left is the, the true spirit of God. Remember the West for many years now has accepted the gender neutral spirit, that's what the Crusades were about. It is about people, uh, the Muslims who weren't entirely right themselves, saying to the Christians, to the West, that God is greater than your gender neutral, passive, Jesus crucified on the T symbol, Hades like, Zeus like, bitch shit. You Dionysus bitches. That is what they were saying. So, uh, any thoughts on the subject? Way up in the notes. Yeah, so uh, referring back to the, the bar versus the bat, and the ra versus the rat, and the car versus the cat, um, you can instantly see that when you replace the uh, bar with the bat, adding the T, the T's are representing a female suffix. And I noticed the immediate change that you can see that the spirit is immediately removed. So moving on to the leopard, the leopard, the Leo being the sign, the zodiac sign, which is lion. And if you compare a lion to a leopard, a lion you see as something that's slow, um, that is less likely to be fast less and, and sluggish. Whereas a leopard, it has speed, it can fly. It's one of those rare animals that can take heavy weight and go up trees. Um, they have replaced the leopard with with a cat. So, for example, they would refer to Heliopolis as cat um, instead of a leopard, which is uh, the Ra's cult center. So, it's really important how they're removing the spirit, the masculine spirit, and replacing it with uh, a gender gender neutral female perspective. All right, so when we look at this thing, we also see it in Eastern martial arts, not only the old Capitoline triad uh, uh, becoming the new Capitoline triad, where we have um, the old Capitoline triad was Jupiter, uh, Mars, and Quinaris, okay, who's also compared to Janus. This is, these are three men. The new Capitoline triad was uh, Juno and Minerva added with Jupiter. Jupiter can be seen as kind of the, the Captain Caveman, primitive man, kind of lion instead of the true leopard spirit of Ra uh, with two females. And one of them takes on a martial arts uh, gear. She's wearing the gear and the, the apparel of marshalling, which is also seen in Athena and other deities as well. So what we see is this kind of mix in their energy. You know, I wouldn't call it a spirit because I only believe in one true spirit. That is the true spirit of God. So what they ha are replacing the spirit with is a t plus Luciferian T energy okay and they are doing it with it is female heavy it favors the female and this is also why we have a Statue of Liberty that's a female it's not a man she doesn't have a male mate it is uh, the type of society that favors the female 
So when we see the Eastern balance, the yin yang, the checker floor of masonry, I've gone over this many times. We see in eugenics, the Boston Brahmins. Why did they choose Eastern thought for their eugenics system when they gave themselves uh, the name Boston Brahmins? Because they liked the way that they all fell in line with a passive system and elevated the Brahmin caste and the highest caste above everyone else, not just socially and economically and politically, but also spiritually. Because part of uh, Hinduism, and we see this uh, echoed in Buddhism, is that people reincarnate toward higher uh, forms of existence and they're punished by reincarnating in, into lower forms of existence. And when you apply that into the social order, it is the rich class. Incidentally, they were the mages that replaced the warrior class, which was the original message of this system, which also was at odds in a reaction to the natural African martial arts order. So when we see the word yeah, that's also the, the same spelling as, as often used is yah, the mean, moon deity, okay? We talk about demons, right? De, demean, demeanor, right? Moon, mean, right? Demean. So moving on. Um, when we see this kind of hive mind group think conformity by women, uh, we, we think about how their brains work in general, okay? And how the brain is structured in the first place. Um, the cerebellum and the midbrain, as well as the other parts of the brain, the cortex, etc., they have uh, implications on genetics reproduction and the brain who has good genes who doesn't cerebellum is a play on words so ra bell you or so ra bell i right balls i the bull's eye incidentally the rat uh it can be seen as a lab rat ra becomes a lab rat okay it becomes a feminine gender neutral passive lab rat to be experimented on drugged fumed put in a labyrinth and, and for purposes of proper conditioning, psychiatry and psychology. Okay, anyway, going back to the cerebellum, it has to do with the balance and that how it relates to martial arts. The midbrain motor movement uh, is also responsible for um, movement, sleep, arousal, and other responses. Okay, so we think about this, you have to put in perspective. Is a, a little, you know, is a little Jiminy Cricket sized person balancing himself? The same as a tall person is balance is is muscle is learned muscle movements right muscle memory the same as using the brain in its entirety or to you know to a higher level to a higher degree to outmaneuver someone it is not the same anyone can train movements over and over again and learn them we can see a little girl uh, moving masterfully as a ballerina in training this means nothing about intelligence. It is a combination of things. And that brings us to the limbic system, which is responsible for emotion and rational thought and emotion to memory, you know, memory and how it relates to emotion. And we think about how that uh, relates to women, right? They're emotional, so they're less rational, and that has to do with the limbic system. So we look at it, all these angles I've come from. I've come from it religiously, culturally, studying, you know, uh, looking over years and years of studying human nature. I've come at it from a martial arts perspective, from a scientific perspective, from all the perspectives. They all point to uh, Pharaoh as the top because of honing his martial arts senses for generations and breeding in the right direction with no ill-gotten gains, cultivating the spirit of righteousness and total awareness of no ill-gotten gains. The different levels of consciousness come to mind. When he cultivates the spirit of righteousness and focuses it masterfully, he is the only one who can claim to truly identify with the cycle of the sun. And he is the fair O, the reproduction. The O is the winged disc. That's how Ra was symbolized. A winged disc, a winged O. Okay, and also it becomes the leopard of Heliopolis, the Ka, Ra. The leopard contains the spirit of Ra. Ra is the source of the Ka, and the leopard is, in nature, is the most dramatic expression of it. Therefore, the leopard martial artist is superior. That's why the leopard society was chosen in Africa. Where do you see this? There's no leopard society in Asia. And if it was, it'd be some obscure society somewhere in history. This is a pervasive martial arts society in Africa. Certainly the cult of Ra must be there. They were sub-Saharan Africans. The leopard is a sub-Saharan African animal. That's the one that they were referring to in Egypt. 
So when we um, look at the cortex, it's responsible for vision, touch, speech, language development, and problem solving. So the martial artist is using his cortex to solve the problems like super speed chess. He's using the limbic system for his rational thoughts, the midbrain for movement, the cerebellum for balance. Okay, and this also relates to cortisol, blood pressure, response to stress. Uh, it weakens the immune system and shuts down the reproductive system. So when we talk about uh, sexual energy and people using the Tantien in Eastern martial arts, we're talking about Luciferian. They're talking about Luciferian energy and how it relates to the reproductive system. And this is a, a hormone released by the adrenal glands called cortisol. So this person is also working with the adrenal glands and, and cortisol. So again, the cerebellum the midbrain, the limbic system, the cortex, and the cortisol. And of course, there are other parts of the brain and other processes coming into action here as well. So when we look at it scientifically. Yes, the martial arts is more intelligent than the scientists. Are you kidding me? He's just a parrot that in some kind of weird, unfocused state of mind happens to come up with a good idea once in a while versus a more effective machine. It is like comparing a, an old Honda to a Lamborghini. When the Lamborghini is, is kind of, the guy driving is kind of confused because you're all working together to cheat him out of his rightful place and his car out of its rightful place, you know, he might be driving slower than the Honda. But that doesn't mean the Honda is a superior superior vessel or, or, or vehicle, nor does it mean that the driver is a superior driver. Especially if he had picked the car thinking it is better than the Lamborghini. So what you see is these people have bred the Honda thinking it is better than breeding the Lamborghini. Despicable. Okay. Um, we talk about the female brain. The female has more blood flow to the right side of the brain. And I believe that's the creative side of the brain. Okay. And, and the man has the more blood flow to the left side of the brain. So female brain versus a male brain. These are terms in science. How can the feminists and the atheists come together with the LGBT community and claim that science says that men are no different than women? There, there's differences uh, in physiology. There's differences when it comes to strength. And, and there's differences when it comes to the very thought processes they have. Women tend to see the bigger picture. Men tend to see details. So when the women see the bigger picture, they see clothes, shelter, food, cars, friends, family, the future with that person, the child, where the man is thinking more of sex because the details of sex, which is actually displaying a superior thought process, as opposed to them oversimplifying it and downplaying the truths in it by saying he just thinks with his dick. He's thinking with his dick because he's more in touch with his senses and, and therefore he has a more effective mind for problem solving. Okay, he's let his, his uh, what was it, the limbic system, which is responsible for emotions, is less impaired by the female brain and the female emotion. So women tend to go off on a tangent. They're an emotional, shallow thinker like a kid versus thinking in deeply, right? Thinking in detail, another way to look at it is thinking deeply, right? You have to be shallow. Should you be shallow and think of things in terms of this world and fail to see God, which is in the details? The devil is in the details, and so is God. So should somebody who cannot see the devil, nor can they see God, be seen as a goddess? It goes back to the E's. The God with the E's is the goddess, and she is the Luciferian, and she's the bat. And bat was on the Narmer palette. The T is the plus. The Ba, the Ra, Ka, and Ba are connected. The cat, the bat, and the rat are connected. When we look at it in terms of mind, body, soul, and spirit. So the passive house nigga with the female energy needs to sit down and shut up. The woman was in the house first and you followed her submissive house nigga direction. Shut up. When you say the black woman is a goddess, then you're saying the man is a divinely appointed king by who? You're putting the woman above the man. This is feminist nonsense. And even the word feminine, you get fee men. Men, the patron of chemists, chemistry. Look at the age of reason, right? You remove the sense, which favors the female. Statue of Liberty is a female. Ra is not, it shouldn't be called God. God is dog backwards. You tell the dog what to do. You say the black man and the people in the spirit of God, and the black man who's in the spirit of God, not the traitor one, and the other people in the spirit of God, you're trying to tell them what to do by teaming up with the woman because you have more in common with her than you do with God. You are the devil, you social controllers. You who do not stand up for truth. So on the left side of the spectrum, we see the openly gender neutral bitch shit. On the right, we see the more masculine side of the spectrum. But it, ultimately, it is the Western spirit of gender neutrality of Zeus, Juno, and Minerva. Thank you.